Hello everyone. In this video we are going to review how to add text to your mobile app. There are a few ways that you can add text within the snappy WYSIWYG editor. I have the editor open right here and you can see an app that I have been working on. And I've got a couple of different types of text in here. I've got uh, some colored and fancy font and I also have something a little bit more simple as well and you have the opportunity to add text into a number of different screens and fields depending on where you want to be able to use that information. So you can see down here under the elements section of the WYSIWYG editor there are several elements or buttons that you can utilize in your app. Down here is the text button. I am going to go to a tab here, our contact us tab, and you can see that I've got some icons here for calling, emailing, and sending a text message to my company. And I also have some buttons that have been pre-configured with some text underneath them that allow the user to push the button and post the information I have provided to Twitter or to Facebook very simply to help promote my business. So to add text, you can bring the text button over, drop it in, and right here is where you can write whatever amount of text that you would like. So in this case I'm just going to write a very simple contact us message and I can change the size of my font. I can change my alignment. In this case I'm going to make it centered. The color of my font and I can change the width which is how much space I want it to take across my screen. 320 is the longest amount of width that you can use and then right here you can see a checkbox for use data source. This is related to times when you would use this information along with an advanced list or potentially an advanced forms. For our purposes right now we do not want to check off that box. So again unless you are doing something like an advanced list where there would be a data source involved you would not check this box when adding text. Once you have the information that you want and configured the way that you would like it, you simply click OK. And now you can see the text that we just added. My alignment here isn't exactly what I want, so I can very easily go in and change that by using one of these buttons. You can see here there are three buttons, Copy, Edit, and Remove. So I'm going to click on the Edit button, and I'm going to actually space down here, click OK again. And now I have my text set up exactly the way that I would like it. And as with every other button or element in Snappy when you're on a screen, if you decide you want to move your text around, you can simply do exactly that. Another way that you could add text into your document is, you'll notice our text element here has just one type of font. We are working on adding additional fonts, but presently there is just one that you can utilize, changing the color and the size to personalize it a bit for your purposes. However, if you wanted to be able to add text into your app and have it be very specific to a color, perhaps word art, and those types of things with a specific background that might be different than the standard colored background you have in your app, you can actually do that by way of an image. What you would do is simply open up a Word document, type in whatever information you want, put in a colored background, add borders, then use a functionality like your snipping tool. Once you take your snip, you can save it and then import it into your app. Rather than dragging over a text button in this case, even though what you're putting in here is text, since you have saved it from another format, you're going to pull over an image button and you're going to specify your image right here. In my case, I'm going to upload an image from my computer. I'm going to go right to where I have my image stored, right here. Once my image populates here in the box, I can then click OK and size my image accordingly. Now you can see that it has appeared here and it's quite large for the area that I'm using. So I'm just going to reduce my size a little bit here. Click OK. And now you can see that I have my text. And again, 
I'm going to move my information around if this is the size that I want that text to be. I can adjust however I need to to make it fit within my space and again if I want to go in and change the sizing of any of my buttons or any of my images or my text I can simply click on any of them and go to the edit box and make those changes but as you can see here I now have text laid out in a certain way with a specific border and background different than just using the regular text button and that allows me to have much more flexibility in how I present text within my app. One other way that you can use the text button as I had mentioned is if you are doing something like an advanced list. Over here I have an advanced list for apartment listings. This lists different districts in New York City. It lists types of properties. It then lists those properties that I have underneath each type that are available for rent. So I'm going to click into this list and go down through some details for you. And what we are looking at is sort of a, a, the building structure of lists inside lists. This is my lowest level or deepest level of list information that I had in my particular advanced list. I'm not going to go into detail right now on how to create an advanced list. However, we do have a video available on our website under the resources section. Product tutorials will take you out to our many videos, one of which is utilizing advanced lists and data sources to help build complex data apps. So that is where you can get a great deal of detail about how to do the advanced lists. However, for our purposes, you can see that there are a number of different text areas here. And I'm going to show you a few of the ways that we implemented the text and why they're each different here. One thing I will note is that when building an advanced list, you need to associate it with a data source. I'm going to click on the data sources here just to show you. So we've got some different data sources in here. In this case, these are all spreadsheets, which I have uploaded, that have quite a bit of information in them. You also have the opportunity to create a data source by way of a data connector, which goes to a web services API. For example, down here, you can see we have several of those pre-built already. You also can build your own data connector if you want to connect to something that we don't offer out of the box. So, for example, your MySQL server. If you want to be able to get or post information there, you can build a data connector to allow that to happen. So you can see my property detail spreadsheet here, my lowest or deepest level of information on the advanced list that we're walking through has a number of fields in it already. All of these fields that indicate text give me the opportunity to pull information from this list into my app for my users to see by using the text button. So closing out of here, right here you can see that I have some text and I followed the same process as before where I took the text button right here pulled it over and dropped it down onto the screen and now I'm going to open it up so you can see the back end. Now previously you filled in the information here that you specifically wanted to show on the screen to the user. So for example our little welcome please contact us message. In this case when I am tying it to a data source and I want the information from that data source or spreadsheet to populate on my advanced list, I'm going to put some information in here. This is some of the information that is in this text box by default when you drop it down. It's really just a placeholder. You can still change your font size, your alignment, your font color, your sizing, and then right here is where you have a difference between using regular text. You can either choose from a data source or from constant. In the case of pulling from a data source, you are telling this text box that you want it to pull information into your app that comes from your data source or spreadsheet and which field of information you want it to populate. In this case, my highest level of information here is my property name. That's the first thing I want my users to see when they click on this particular list item. So I have tied it to property name and clicked OK. 
Although what you see on the back end is your placeholder, if you will, what your users will see on the front end is the property name for each of the properties that you have on your list. Going down here to the next text element, we're just going to take a look inside. Same thing, I simply have a placeholder here in my text field. I've changed my color and my alignment, also my sizing. I have again tied it to my data source. And in this case, I've asked it to pull cost information. So what displays for the app user here is how much the monthly rental fee is for each particular property. And so that same process is followed throughout this screen. Right here, you'll notice that I've got bedrooms and studio. Studio was tied directly to my data source and pulls from that data source or spreadsheet the number of bedrooms available for each property on my list. The bedrooms listing, though, is something that I want to stay constant. So no matter which item on my list my app user is looking at, when they come down to this property detail screen, I always want them to see that this line relates to bedrooms. Again, this was done by way of a text box, but instead of choosing data source as my field here, I chose constant. I did that because I always want whatever text I put in here to be what shows up right here. So again, there are a few ways that you can implement text within your mobile app. You can do it inside a functionality like an advanced list, in which case, once you have dragged over your text box, you want to be sure that you either select your data source and the field that you wish to use to pull the information into your app, or you select constant and fill in the information that you would like to show on any given screen. And the other opportunities to implement text over here, we're going to go back into our contact us, is by way of dragging over a text box, dropping it down as we did here, and then filling in whatever text you would like, configuring for the size, alignment, color, and width. You also can use any type of word art or other word images by creating that information in a program like Word, putting in the text, coloring, borders, and any other details that you would like, and then using a tool like the snipping tool to snip out the specific area of text that you would like and save it as an image file. Then you can drop down an image button, as we did here, and simply specify the image that you would like to use by uploading it from your computer. And that is how you utilize the text button and implement different options for text within your mobile app.